you can rely on the critics reviews but the big thing you need is the audience reaction and their word of mouth and so you have to have a wow moment in your show that makes them say oh wow wasn't that cool when or did you notice when and they so they're talking about it as they're leaving when they go home when they go to work the next and so forth so that wow moment is what and it doesn't have to be expensive or explosive it just has to be something that makes them say oh that was so cool We are looking forward our way from Studio C in the 511 Studios. That's in the Brewery District, just south of downtown Columbus, Ohio. Hi, this is Brett. Audience, have you ever attended a murder mystery dinner theater event? Well, hang on to your hats. We are in for some fun today. Correct. Let's welcome our guest, Mark Seven. He is the CEO, founder, director, and all-around trailblazer of the Getaway with Murder Mystery Party organization. Thanks for joining us, Mark. Thank you very much. Glad to meet you both. Yeah, he's been the major force of Getaway with Murder Mystery Programs for many years, focusing first in Chicago and now also in the Cleveland and Toledo areas. Mark's joining us today from Northern Ohio. Uh, Let's start by hearing more about you, your background, and how you became the face and voice of Getaway with Murder. Well, I had um, been a performer with the company uh, in the early 90s and uh, after about two and a half or three years the owner was looking to get out of this and so I made her an offer to buy it from her and uh, so I uh, bought the show from her and put my own stamp on it and grew it it was at the time when the internet was just beginning Right. And so we were able to uh, use that to uh, uh, to our advantage, and it's uh, grown and grown and grown. Mark, you were in Chicago at that time, and then yes, came, I was. came mm-hmm. to Ohio. Okay, but it's yes. Okay, all right. So you know, I have to admit, there has not been many dinner theater programs in Central Ohio during my lifetime. Um, there have been a few venues appeared, but normally they were in and out of town pretty quickly. And here you are celebrating your 26th anniversary doing this program. So, you know, in today's world, everybody's talking about getting pizza while they're watching a movie at the at the big box theater groups. Yeah. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, how this all started and um, what does this type of event mean to theater overall? Well, um First of all, I just want to just correct you a little bit. We are celebrating our 28th anniversary. Oh, 28. Now, wow. didn't you email yes. me 26? It's 28. Good job. Well, <laughs> sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Tuesday was our 28th anniversary on the 11th of July. And um, to, be, uh, to uh, answer your question, you're right. Dinner theater um, – there, there was a, a dinner theater between Columbus and Dayton – Mm-hmm. Uh, in the uh, mid 70s that I worked at but they have uh, largely gone away partly because of, of cost um, and just economics in mm-hmm. general food quality sometimes were was a uh, lacking right uh, but th- so how we differ from that is we're trying to make it more of a dinner party of a theme party rather than a dinner theater because the concept of dinner theater is that you uh you know have a you go to a place where uh, that's a separate building that is the dinner theater and you eat a meal and then watch a show on a stage a musical or, or comedy and what we do is uh more transportable we can go to restaurants banquet halls we're not in a theater s- a setting and so it's not really a theater. We're trying not to promote dinner theater. It's a mystery dinner party. It sounds like it's much more interactive, too. Yes, yes, because you're not just watching a program. It's much like being in a live-action clue game oh, fun. where fun. we, we uh, invite the audience to participate by playing suspects. Now, if this show is open to the public where they're buying a ticket to one of our events that we sponsor, 
then they will be asked to play a role as they come in. And we'll have, we'll have maybe a hat or a boa or a vest or a, an, an apron or something to add to their character to wear along with their sheet of paper that describes who they are and what their clues are and so forth. If it's a private party that we're doing, we would send that material to the host or the coordinator ahead of time, and they would pre-assign those roles to people in their organization, and they would come prepared. And if you want to, if they want to come dressed up in the, in that character's mm -hmm. outfit, then there it's up to them. They can uh, do that themselves. But it is very interactive, and then one of them is the killer, but they never know which one it is, like in the game, the board game. They don't know until the very end when we make the arrest. You know, you know, Mark, as I mentioned at the top of this, you, we have a, a mutual friend. So I think our, our, um, our next uh, conversation with our mutual friend is to get her back here to Ohio, and, and she and I come and, and join you in an event. That's on the agenda. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, as we all know, and we've done previous episodes about this, arts programs took a major hit during the pandemic. Would you tell us how you kept your company afloat? I mean, what changes did you make? What was successful? What maybe didn't work either? And and um, have you been able to or needed to incorporate any of these changes into now, quote unquote, normal times? Well, that's a great question, Brett. Thank you. Uh, we were shut down briefly, uh, as was everyone. But the uh, advantage that we had over and above any other theater was that we didn't have the theater building, as I described just a mo moment ago. We were um, had residencies in the Spaghetti Warehouse restaurant in Toledo and in Akron. And when those were able to reopen, they wanted us to come back to do our murder mysteries in their banquet rooms. And so we found a way to um, have shields, clear face shields so that people could see our lips moving and get the uh, facial expressions and it didn't muffle our voices. They weren't as quite as quote unquote safe as the regular face mask, but we distanced ourselves from the audience, which was seated at separate tables. So each reservation had their own table and we were distanced from each other and that helped a lot. We also created a new format in a mystery game show so that the three actors were seated behind like jazz booths and they would each claim not to be the killer in this story. And the host then would moderate the audience, which was split into three teams, like in Wheel of Fortune, red, yellow, and blue teams. And they would question the, uh, the suspects about where they were and how do they know each other and what happened when and, and based on the story that they had in front of them. And then they would all vote eventually as to which one they thought was the killer and which one was not telling the truth because they all claimed to not be the killer yes. and then they would the, the host would say would the real killer please stand up you know and they would do that bouncy thing and, <laughs> and give the anticipation uh, and uh, and then they would it's tell scary because um, I can remember those old shows <laughs> yes. and so <laughs> the other two would tell why they aren't the killer and then the real killer would say why he he or she is the killer and why she's glad they did it and then we'd have intermission with dessert and then they would do show number two and so it was a nice full evening and that uh, we've uh, answered to your question, Brett, about how to incorporate that into current things. We have used that to sell to private clients for something different, for they have a large enough group that we can get the you know different uh, nice size of of uh, audience to do that. We did that recently for a fundraiser for a community theater program and did it in their auditorium. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah. As a fundraiser. Yeah. So uh, that's how we've incorporated that. Plus, we also, in the pandemic, kept our actors busy by creating, recreating vintage radio mystery programs like Sherlock Holmes or Lights Out, uh, Dick Tracy, 
the the Thin Man and different uh, of those, uh, uh, even uh, um, Dragnet started out as a radio uh, mm -hmm. mystery program. And we recreated those with the sound effects, the music, some commercials, and uh, we put those out on YouTube. And even though they weren't visual, um, we were able to put them on Spotify and some other uh, uh, platforms that people could listen to them just like the old-time radio listeners did. i got to applaud you. If you guys dig into Lights Out, that's gold. Oh, that's gold yes. stuff, man. That's good stuff. Yeah, yes. man. <laughs> well, there you go. And so those are st those those YouTube programs are still out there, right? If people are still interested, they can check it out. Yes, yes. There's um, there's a, I think one or two Sherlock Holmes that are st uh, they're actual videos that they were, they were videotaped that they can see, and they're under the name the new old time radio show great we will uh listeners we will make those links available on our show notes for this for this podcast program so uh it'll be worth uh taking a look and if you need some easy entertainment you are not only the director of an arts program but also a business owner are there lessons that you can share with us that will help individuals who are doing things like what you're doing as a director and as an owner of a company I think that the real they're not getting the um, the attendance and they're having trouble marketing to to their uh, regular customers they're maybe afraid to come out they're maybe older and so they're afraid to come out and gather with uh, people in a um, in a public setting mm -hmm. still and so there's lots of um, I think there are new requirements that owners, business owners of of theaters and uh, entertainment in general, need to reconsider as to how they're going to attract new people to their venue, as well as uh, giving a comfort zone to traditional patrons to their mm -hmm. establishment. Good and point. so when i say oh, being open to yes just you know have conversations with your staff your board uh, of directors or ho however your um your business is uh set up and come up with ways that could work and be open to the possibilities rather than saying oh no that's never going to work you never know right and that's show business is a lot about you know playing darts or throwing spaghetti on the wall. <laughs> right, right. And you know, that's really good advice for literally any nonprofit, not just somebody who owns a business who should already be sort of ingrained in that notion of always say yes, but nonprofits have really been hurt during the pandemic and many have closed or they are still struggling and they Absolutely. are inundated with people in need. Um, so the arts organizations are sort of on the flip side people don't necessarily need an arts organization. So your message to them is this is this will be good for you. And absolutely. If I read a um an article and this actually was prior to the pandemic, but it's still good today. And the author of this magazine industry magazine article was about the graying of theater in general and mm -hmm. how to attract audiences and he said you can rely on the critics' reviews, but the big thing you need is the audience reaction and their word of mouth. And so you have to have a wow moment in your show that makes them say, oh, wow, wasn't that cool when? Or did you notice when? And they so they're talking about it as they're leaving, when they go home, when they go to work the next day and so forth so that wow moment is what and it doesn't have to be expensive or explosive it just has to be something that makes them say oh that was so cool and and something mm. that that's enough of a wow to make them push the button on their social media on their phone and send it out and buy a ticket yeah. yes yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly exactly yeah well you've got a lot of themes for your shows can you give us an overview of those themes and you know, what's been most successful and how do you create the new shows? Is that input from actors or you get some input from audience as well? 
Yes, 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 and yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Which I figured was the answer because those are the best sources of just, you never know those ideas yeah. coming from left field, an audience member or whatever going, that's a great idea, you know, yeah. we're all creative. So, so um, we have about 30 different themes right now. Oh, wow. Mm. Um, they're divided up into two groups. One is historical and one is uh, contemporary. And in the contemporary, we do have a future outer space mystery, which is kind of fun. Uh, and we also have some uh, holiday themes uh, in addition to that. And that's not counting the game show uh, themes. Uh, but our traditional mysteries um, are divided into historical and, to, and contemporary. And the ones that are the most popular are the historical ones. We've got everything from pirates to the Old West to the gangsters up through um, the 1950s and a James Bond spoof from the 69-70 psychedelic era. Mm -hmm. And those are fun because people like to dress up uh, for those. And so they're uh, just, they're very popular. Um, and we have had people uh, that have, audience who has inspired us. There's one classic example where we had, we were doing our Roaring Twenties gangster mystery at Michael Jordan's restaurant in downtown Chicago around the 4th of July one year. And um, it was about the, uh, the murder of a gangster and his mother was part of the story along with his sister and younger brother, but his father was not mentioned in the story at all. And so during dinner, I'm sitting across from a guest and she says to me, well, what happened to Papa Buka? And I'm trying to stay in character and <laughs> Uh, you, know, you know, it's like being at one of those history museums, you know, <laughs> and, and, and I said, well, Papa Buki isn't part of this story, but what happened to him? She was so insistent and I kept, you know, trying to divert the answer. And finally I said, well, he's dead. <laughs> and she said, well, how did he die? And I'm like, oh my gosh. And so I went home and wrote a story about how Papa Buka died. There you go. Oh my gosh. And then, oh my gosh. And, and then one of my actresses called me up as I was writing this. And uh, we had a character in that show whose name was Mona Lisa Marinera. And, and so she, this actress called me up and she said, Mark, my husband and I are sitting here at Red Lobster, and there's an item on the menu that you have to use in your in your new mystery. And I said, "What's that?" She said, "It's mussels marinara." And I said, oh, I, "I said, oh, that's Mona Lisa's father." And so, <laughs> mussels so, marinara. Uh, and and that's so, not a gangster name. I, I don't know saying, what but, is. But don't, don't let what. <laughs> Don't let Red Lobster know because they're going to want to want to you know a cut of the profits here. <laughs> yes. So that's how that's how we get some of our ideas. You just never know. And uh, <laughs> from restaurant <laughs> menus, there you go. Hey, <laughs> yes. it works. It works. Oh, oh that that is wonderful. <laughs> so okay, so you've got a new theme. You're ready to prepare for a show. Um, where do you find your actors, the sets, the costumes? Well, you're the script writer, I think. Um, but, you yes. know, the publicity and marketing pass, what have you found to be successful? Oh, um, the costumes were something that I added when after I bought the company. That was just something I felt that would, as an actor in the company but prior to my purchase, when we were doing large parties, say, you know, 50 to 100 people or more, it was a little bit frustrating for us and as for the guests to know where a certain suspect was in the room to have them go ask a question. And I thought, you know what, if they had a hat or a, or a judge's robe or an apron or a feather boa, you could just say, oh, uh, talk to that lady in the corner with the black hat on. Right. And so I just, so it just kind of grew from that. And I just got a few items here and there and going to thrift shops and yard sales and, and that kind of thing. And th then later on, I started getting into some vintage 
stuff and buying stuff online and or maybe going to a costume shop who was having a sale mm -hmm. the theater company was having a sale of their old stuff and so i would buy some things that were cheap on the dollar and maybe maybe fix them up or clean them up and and use them so that's how the uh, what we do with the costumes and we just for publicity we've just used um we've just grown with the times you know we've gotten to uh uh, we're suddenly doing um, a contest using Facebook and Instagram posting. And uh, if you uh, l if you post a picture and uh, and uh, like us, then you're entered into a contest to uh, uh, get a free ticket. Oh, nice. so we're just we're just we're just growing, you know, as 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 everyone changes with their adaptations and their phones, you know, take a picture uh, of us, share it with you, with you on your Facebook page so that we can get more publicity and get those algorithms moving. Right. So we are trying to, you know, adapt into the 21st century and use all the tools that are available. People that you work with on a regular basis or are there folks in and out or are you looking for new people? Well, um, occasionally people do uh, transition out. We just had one gal who uh, moved to New York, and sometimes people retire and move away, which means we do, yes, use older actors. Mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not all, you know, 20-somethings. Um, but by and large, we do have a roster of people who are um, not dedicated but um, are familiar with our uh, format and know what the jokes are and know what to how how to uh make it work wonderful and so we call on them we have a casting director who will uh when he gets new dates from a, a, a new customer or we publish our sponsored events he'll contact them and say who's available in november for these dates and who's who's available and you know and then he based on his response he'll cast them and send them contracts and because they're contracted um per show mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. per event okay. Okay. okay so um we are going to take a sneak peek at what is going to be happening soon with your theater program um so if we saw a trailer and it had all of your upcoming shows for the end of 23 and into 24. What would we be seeing in that trailer? Uh, you would be seeing uh, uh, some very fun shows coming up. We are doing a, a show called The Case of the Spooky Seance, uh, which is about a psychic who was unable to predict her own murder. <laughs> at uh at the end of november what and what was the name of that again <laughs> the case of the spooky seance oh, and we we recreate the seance because people love that kind of stuff oh, yeah. we recreate the seance that preceded her her demise <laughs> and we try, to, we try to contact her uh to tell us who was that um that did her in <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> We, that, that's going to be toward the end of uh, November, around a Thanksgiving weekend, actually. Okay. And uh, then we're going to be doing um, the case of um, uh, the, the murder of Scrooge. It's called A Christmas Carol Shadow. Oh. Uh, so Scrooge was murdered the day after he was turned into this wonderful, generous human being. And he, why would anyone want to kill him now? Well, there's a whole village of people who are still harboring, uh, uh, you know, ill feelings toward the old buzzard. Is, isn't that Boxing Day then too? <laughs> the 26th of December, isn't that Boxing Day? Did somebody beat him to death? Yeah. I, believe it, I believe it is. <laughs> and we're also doing um, The Elf Who Knew Too Much, which, which is... <laughs> A uh, spoof on the Jimmy Stewart thing about the man who knew to, this. This elf was um, the Viagra, the, the Viagra connection at the North Pole. <laughs> and if you if if you just want to think about an elf needing Viagra, that's uh, just pretty funny in itself. Oh my God. And all, and we have Santa and Mrs. Claus as as characters, suspects in the mystery, <laughs> along with a few elves and all the reindeer and Rudolph. Who is the recovering alcoholic? So that's why he has the red, red nose. Red nose. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and 
And we also are doing um, The Great Reindeer Hoax. Oh. Which is a spoof on the song Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. Well, there you go. It uh, wasn't a reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> there were some skis that were found in the chimney. Oh. And there were two Santa hats that were found. So somebody else was playing Santa. Oh. So we, but we use clues from the song, and many of the clues are in rhyme, so they could be sung to a Christmas carol or a, a children's nursery rhyme song. And so the songs are very, and it's about Grandma's Chocolate Factory. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Chocolate's big at that, Christmas, you I, know. I was just going to say, that's a complicated event. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, we had an actor one year, who was playing the the um, a family member in this story who was a chocoholic, and and generally that role is given to a guest to play, but it was a large event, and so we added a few professional actors in, and he played this character, and he sat down to dinner, and he had the salad in front of him, and he pulled out a bottle of Hershey's. Uh, and and squeezed it on his salad and he ate it because he was a chocoholic there you go and I, thought, I thought that's dedication man <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my gosh oh my gosh he, he, uh, he was a he was a hit at the party i want you to know i'll bet i bet i'll bet goodness <laughs> Sounds like 23 is going to go out with a bang yeah, in, yeah, no in the theater. Yes. 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 Wow. yes. So that, that's, that's, what's, that's what's coming up. Okay. Nice. Right. Well, you've expanded into various locations in northern Ohio and still have some programs in Chicago. Uh, yes. You coming a little bit further south in the state? Well, I would love to get into Columbus, especially with the, uh, the new business coming in with the Intel chip um, a site and i think this is going to be tons and tons of uh business and new uh employees coming to work in columbus and so i think the time is ripe uh for uh getting us into columbus well and you know columbus um population is the really the youngest in the state there are many more younger really? people in columbus mm -hmm. because of the university um oh, so, right. yeah so i you know it as you said when you're looking at expanding that audience in terms of um, the age and background of, of audience members, you know, Columbus mm -hmm. could really be ripe for this. Uh, young folks love to be entertained. They do, absolutely. And uh, the humor that we have is timeless. It's intergenerational. It's not about uh, the, um, the, lo the, the newest thing, the fad, you know, the in pop culture stuff. It's just general old fashioned humor that I grew up with. And so it's, uh, it's still timeless and it's, uh, it's good for all age groups. Right. We have actually done a few parties in, um, I think we've done one in Cincinnati. Uh, we've done a, f a couple in the Mansfield area and we were in Springfield, uh, I think once or twice. There you go. You're you're circling around Central Ohio. You haven't quite yes, got here. Yes. So so audience, if you want to see Mark, let him know um, that you're here in Central Ohio and and to come and visit us. We okay. travel anywhere because we've actually traveled all over the country uh, to Seattle, Lake Tahoe, um, Boston, uh, uh, Florida. We've we've gone Michigan. We've gone everywhere. Very cool. Nice, okay. nice. Well. Uh, if a member of our audience wanted to see a production, where can they find your show schedule, suggestions on travel and accommodations? I mean, for us, if we're looking at Central Ohio, well, anywhere that you're not, you know, based per se, it's going to take a little bit of travel, maybe some accommodations. What's the best way to put that together so they can make it a nice trip where you are, where the performance is, and then, you know, um, know that they're back home in time for the next thing? Well, we have our website has all, all our listings of our shows. We have the ones that we've sponsored, and a lot of times we will put um, links to other shows that are private customers of ours who are selling tickets. Mm -hmm. And so, if uh, you could just get to our website, which is getawaywithmurder.com, not how to, just <laughs> getawaywithmurder.com and uh, and go down to live, uh, click on the uh, tab that says live events. 
and uh, it will take you to the Spaghetti Warehouse in Akron and in Toledo, and you can click on those sites and order tickets there, or um, you can uh, click on maybe the Cuyahoga Valley Scenic Railroad or the Blue Tea Hotel or the Music Box Supper Club and order your tickets uh, directly through that link. Okay, great. And, and again, audience, we'll have all of this information on our show notes so you can get in touch with Mark and um, also check out the schedule of events. So that would be <clears throat> wonderful. Um, so, um, you know, Mark, we always ask our guests if they have any last words <coughs> of wisdom. It, it, and it seems like podcasts just fly by. We're, we're done talking <clears throat> to our guests in, in literally seconds, I think. Um, but what suggestions do you have for our listeners today? If you want to laugh and have a good time, come and see our shows. That's it. Um, <laughs> that, that's our motto. Um, we, our focus is on the audience, not on ourselves. A lot of our competition seems to focus on showcasing their own talents. And we focus on the audience instead because we find that our audiences are the reason why we're continuing for 28 years right. and so my uh, word of advice is to don't give up on whatever is frustrating your day make a plan and see one of our shows and you'll find that life can be really fun listeners thank you for joining us don't forget to check out the show notes on the website for contact information for mark and the getaway with murder shows you can find that information on our website at lookingforwardourway.com we look forward to hearing from you your feedback on this episode episode and, and any of our other podcast episodes